Today, I'm going to rank every Red Dead Redemption 2 character from the least intelligent to the most intelligent. 95% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. In 48th place, I brought Bill Williamson. Of course, Bill is probably one of the stupidest members in the entire game. I just feel like he doesn't think about anything. He just kind of goes along with everything. He's just like this big, dumb brute. And clearly, I mean, you see in the first game and in this game, like, he's just not supposed to be smart. I feel like everything he just is like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to follow your orders and do whatever. And clearly just in, like, both the Navy and in the Vanderlyn gang, he's not taught to think with his brain. He's just taught to do what people's other people's orders are and just kind of follow them. And that's what makes him literally the dumbest character in the game. And that means he kind of has to go into F tier. In 47th place, I've got Joe. I mean, it, you have to be kind of stupid to follow Micah and to ke clearly keep following him even after it seems like he just discards everyone around him who doesn't work for him and like to do the right thing for him. So, you know, especially when Micah just could turn on a whim and just shoot this guy in the head. I feel like it's pretty stupid to follow Micah and just to do that the entire game. Seems like a really bad idea. So again, I think he has to go into F tier. It takes a little bit of brains just to think about not following Micah. So F tier. Same thing with Glee in 46th place. I mean, I think he's basically the same thing as Joe, but Joe is like Bill 2.0. But Cleet is like a little bit smarter and he left a little bit earlier. But at the same time, it's so stupid to follow Micah because you know Heat's going to be coming after you all the time. So I think, again, Cleet is one of the stupidest characters in the entire game. There's just no brains going on with him. So again, I think he has to go into F tier as well. In 45th place, I've got Reverend Swanson. Pretty similarly to these other people, there's just not much going on in Swanson's head. And I think especially when he's just high off opium the entire time during the game, he's like, he's always trying to steal stuff. He's just not doing anything to provide for the game. And he's just always pissing himself and shitting himself. And he's just one of the most disgusting characters the entire time. That just shows that he's not that smart in general. And I think Swanson, I mean, clearly at the end of the game, he finally does come to his senses and kind of wise up a little bit. And that's why I can't put him in F tier, but still, he's just really not a smart character at all, especially when he's high off opium, which is basically the entire game until the sixth chapter. You don't really get to see a lot of that. And I mean, clearly, he does shape himself up to be a better person after that. But it clearly seems like the drugs have really distorted his brain function and all that. So I don't think I can put him any higher than D tier. In 44th place, I've got Jack Marson. Jack Marson is literally four-year-olds for the majority game. And I just feel like being a four-year-old clearly puts your knowledge and just smartness below everyone else. And I mean, when he is, I think, 12 at the like epilogue of the game, like, of course, he is pretty smart by then. But, you know, being a four-year-old really shows like he's, he's not going to be <laughs> the smartest guy out there. Like when he is 12, I think he's probably smarter than like Bill for sure. Like, I mean, you don't have to be that smart to be smarter than Bill. But and some of these other characters probably the same. But just, just like as a four-year-old, you can't be that smart, and that's the majority of the game. So I don't think that he can go any higher than D tier just because he's so stupid as a four-year-old. So he's definitely a D tier character in terms of intelligence. In 43rd place, about Colonel Favors. Well, Colonel Favors is like at least kind of smart, kind of well-educated and all that. Like he did go to college. I still think he is pretty stupid. It feels like everything he does is just like to stroke his own ego and to try and get like a success. And it just seems like he's failed upward and upward where he had a ton of losses in the Union Army and he just became a colonel from that. And it's like, I feel like he's just been in the right spot at the wrong time and he just kind of picks fights with people for no reason. I just don't think he's as intelligent as he seems. It seems like he does a lot of things based on ego, which I mean, I feel like is pretty not intelligent at all. So. I don't know. I can't really put him any higher. He just has a lot of power and all these things, but it seems like he just kind of failed upward into that power and got that power through ways that don't really show his intelligence. So I definitely think he has to go into D tier as well. In 42nd place, I've got Pearson. I don't think Pearson's all that stupid, but there's just not much going on in his brain. He's like, oh, let me cook. Let me do all this. Let me let me let people abuse me, basically. And I just don't think he's all that smart in general. I mean, he's a cook, and he's not really doing much. He's not like a fighter or anything. So I think that really brings him down. I just don't think there's much going on with him. He doesn't have to think about much. And like, especially when you see his writing, like clearly it does seem like he's a well-written guy. But at the same time, it just doesn't seem like there's much going on to you know distinguish him from that so just because you can't really see much of him going on in the game i think he has to go into d tier in terms of intelligence 
In 41st place, I've got Lee Gray. I think he is pretty well educated, especially compared to some of these other characters. But at the same time, like this is just not that much of an intelligent guy. It seems like he's kind of just taking his intelligent and just throwing it in the trash and just is like, oh, let, let me just drink my ass off all day. It's like, bro, you can't really do that. And it just shows that you're not that intelligent of a person when you're just like such an alcoholic and you just don't care about your like job at all. Like when he's supposed to be protecting the town. And I just clearly don't think that shows a lot of intelligence. So I don't think he can go any higher than D tier. I mean, you don't really see literally any of his intelligence there. And I feel like it just shows that he's not that intelligent of a character. In 40th place, we've got Kieran Duffy. I mean, Kieran isn't clearly stupid, but like, I don't really think there's much going on with his in his head. Just like Pearson, I feel like there's, he's just not thinking about much, and especially as someone who joins the O'Driscolls. And I feel like you probably know the O'Driscolls like name around you. Like, oh, the O'Driscolls. And you hear that around... And you're like, oh, let me go join their their gang, even though he literally just takes these people and basically just chews them up and spits them out and just use them as bodies for his fodder and what he wants to do. So it's like you clearly have to be kind of stupid to join the O'Driscolls in general. And I feel like Kieran doesn't show that much in terms of smarts in general besides that. I don't know. He's, he's not like the stupidest character for sure, but I don't really see a lot of intelligence from him. So I can only put him in D tier. In 39th place, about Molly O'Shea. While Molly clearly is well-educated, she's reading books all the time, and she did come from a really wealthy family in Ireland. To take that family life and just throw it away to go live with Dutch Vanderlyn is probably one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. And just the fact that she tried to rat on them, and she kind of knew all the consequences and all this, but she's just blinded by her love for Dutch. And I feel like her love for Dutch really superseded her intelligence here. While she is clearly an intelligent character in terms of like book smart, she just does not seem that social smart at all. I feel like that's what really hurts her in terms of the entire game. So I think I, she has to go into D tier as well. In 38th place, we've got Karen. I don't think Karen is like all that stupid, but just the alcohol really, you know, hurts her intelligence and just being an alcoholic really hurts that intelligence. I just don't think there's that much like interesting going on with her. It doesn't seem like she's that well educated and just seems like she, she is pretty smart socially in terms of like she can kind of trick people into doing stuff. But at the same time, she's kind of naive in that same sense where she kind of really overestimates her like ability to trick people. Clearly when you see when she kind of gets abused during the beginning of the game, like her intelligence is definitely a little bit overestimated in that sense. So I think she has to go into D tier as well. There's just not enough going on with her to put her any higher than D tier. 37th place about Javier Escuela. Javier clearly isn't stupid, but I just don't think there's really anything making him smart. I feel like he's just basically a gun for hire in terms of the, the entire gang as a whole. I, don't, I just don't think there's like a lot where I'd be like, oh, Javier is such a smart guy. He kind of just, you know, makes it through the situation no matter what. He never like gets killed or anything. It doesn't seem like he's that, you know, super smart socially. He just seems like this guy that, you know, is kind of right in the middle for everything. And while, you know, that seems fine, it really deducts him because some of these other characters actually show a little bit of intelligence. So I think I have to put him in D tier. There's just not much going on in either direction to put him any higher than D tier. In 36th place, about Jamie Gillis. Jamie Gillis clearly is well-educated, but this guy literally falls for the Chelonian cult. So I don't think I can put him any higher in terms of like intelligence than D tier just because if you fall for a cult like Chelonia where like even Arthur at this point the beginning of the game he literally perfectly sees through it like I mean you kind of have to be a certain kind of special and it's like I feel like he's just really naive where I mean I feel like that really hurts him and his well-educatedness doesn't really show off that that much so I think he is also a D tier in terms of intelligence character. In 35th place, about Alberto Fusar. While I do hate this character with an absolute passion, I think he's actually at least kind of smart. I mean, he's kind of running a big thing going on. And I feel like while there was a rebellion eventually, it seems like he's like, you know, not really, really stupid. He just is like, you know, not the most intelligent. Like someone like Bronte or, you know, he's, he's clearly looking down on Fusar and he just feels like he kind of got the good end of the stick instead of the short end of the stick so i don't know i don't think he's that intelligent i just think fusar in general is not that intelligent of a person so i think he has to go into d tier in 34th place about miss grimshaw miss grimshaw is okay in terms of intelligence but i feel like she's just the most like okay intelligence person like she's not stupid she's not really that smart at all i mean i'm assuming she was at least solidly educated by someone like it clearly seems like she came from a nice family 
and just, you know, kind of fell into line with Dutch, which I feel like, again, is a pretty stupid thing to do, especially when she's been basically following him for 40 years at this point or something, some crazy amount. And I just think that's kind of the part where it shows that she's, you know, not all that intelligent. She's kind of fallen into this comfortable life and just doesn't want to leave it, even when she doesn't have that many benefits from it. So I don't think she's that stupid or that smart, but she's just kind of right in the middle. So I think she has to go into C tier. In 33rd place about Sean McGuire, Sean is clearly not that well educated, but at the same time, I feel like he, he does show a lot of social smartness. He always can like finesse his way out of things, pretty similarly to someone like Trelawney, but at the same time, he's kind of like the grunt guy doing all these things. So while he does have a lot more like social intelligence than people like Javier or Bill, he doesn't really have a lot of like well-educatedness going on like, you know, a lot of these other characters do. And you don't really see that like oh, I'm looking for higher learning, similar to like someone like Arthur or Dutch, where they're like always, you know, trying to figure out things in terms of like Evelyn Miller and all that. So I don't know. He's definitely not stupid at all, but there's just not that much intelligence going on with him. And it's mostly social intelligence that's putting him into C tier. In 32nd place, we've got Abigail Roberts. Abigail's, you know, definitely not the most intelligent person in the entire game. Clearly, she didn't come from a well-educated background. I feel like just her and John really just don't understand each other at all. They don't really understand communication and how to talk things over. I just think there's just not that much intelligence going on between the both of them. They're both, like, okay in terms of intelligence, but there's, like, a little bit of social intelligence, a little bit of actual intelligence, but, I mean... It's just not that much in terms of like intelligence coming out of Abigail. So I don't think I can put her any higher than C tier. She is not the most well-educated person and not the most well-spoken person. So I don't know. I, I don't think she's any higher than C tier, but she's definitely not stupid at all. So I think she has to go into C tier. In 31st place, that has to be John Marston. While John does become one of the most intelligent characters in Red Dead Redemption 1, I just think in Red Dead Redemption 2, and especially during the main story of the game, I don't think this is that intelligent of a man. And I think, especially in the epilogue, he kind of gets blinded by a lot of these things, and he kind of has to you know, take a little bit and see other people's perspectives to really understand these situations, like with fatherhood and all that. And I just think he needs to see Abigail's situation. And, and I don't think it all comes from John. Like he eventually does learn a lot of these things, but I feel like it's just his experiences from being at Beecher's Hope really turns him into the intelligent man he is by Red Dead Redemption 1, where you can clearly see that kind of exudes it. But in Red Dead Redemption 2, there's just not that much coming out of this guy. And I feel like he's just the most like mid-educated guy where he's like he's not super well educated but he's not like really that stupid at all he just kind of needs to see other people's perspectives to really understand how he should think and why he should think certain ways so i think he perfectly has to go into c tier in 30th place about eagle flies well eagle flies clearly is pretty like smart and well educated i just don't think he's as smart as you know he seems he's a little naive in certain things and you know while he is yet yeah, well educated and does have a really really smart father i think he just overlooks things because he's young and naive and all that i feel like that has to bring him down a little bit lower and i just think while he yeah he does make a lot of smart choices i mean i feel like there's a lot of really stupid choices and i think that's really what kind of balances him out to a c tier character in terms of like c tier in terms of intelligence because there's just not enough going on to put him any higher than c tier especially with all the stupid decisions he makes in 29th place about captain monroe pretty similarly to eagle flies i feel like it's just all naivety that really hurts this guy because he does everything for honor everything needs to be the most honorable thing possible i feel like that has to bring him down a lot just because yeah while he is one of the most honorable characters in the entire game, he could have had taken out really the easy way out and, you know, done all these things and taken like actually the smart way out. But instead he's like, oh, might as well just take the most honorable path possible and instead basically make it the hardest for everyone else around me, but, or the hardest for me, but the easiest for everyone else around me. And while I get that, just, it doesn't seem like the smartest decision in my opinion. So I think again, he has to go into C tier. In 28th place about Archie Downs, I think Archie Downs is pretty, you know, smart for his age, but of course he is a pretty young guy. He doesn't really have that many worldly experiences, so I really can't put him any higher than C tier. I, I just don't think he has enough, you know, time going around the world and kind of learning about everything to be any higher than that, just because, I don't know, th there's just something that it clearly seems like he's pretty naive about, and while he does take the money from Arthur, which I think is a really, really good choice, I mean, there's just not much that we see that shows that he's like a really smart guy. So I think he has to go into C tier. 
in 27th place, I have his father, Thomas Downs. I think similarly to a lot of these other characters here, he's just a really naive guy. He doesn't really care about, like, he only cares about charity and all that. And I feel like he kind of puts his family on the back burner because he's, like, such a good guy and all that. And he, like, wants to do everything for charity. And instead, kind of, yeah, loses his family and does a lot of bad things for his family. And, you know, catches tuberculosis, even though that's not his fault. But still, like, there's a lot of things that go wrong for him because he's such a nice guy. And that kind of brings his intelligence down. So I think he has to go into C tier. In 26th place about Lenny Summers, while Lenny is one of the highest and like most well-educated people in the entire game and like especially in the Vander Lynn gang, I just don't think he's like as he's just way too naive to go any higher and I feel like his intelligence really just boils down to school smarts. He doesn't have the same like street smarts as everyone else in the Vander Lynn gang do, especially just because he's young and he hasn't spent that much time there. I mean, he's kind of, you know, left his life of, of course, you know, being nice and being well-educated and left it to be in a gang. So I feel like that just shows that he's just not the smartest i mean if you're actually someone that's well educated like jose is like oh you got to get out of here lenny you got to do all this other stuff because you know being smart isn't gonna help you in a gang it's definitely gonna help you in the real world where you should really be and i feel like that's what shows that like lenny's smartness really kind of gets taken down to a lower notch and i think that's why he has to go into c tier in 25th place about hair cool i feel like hair cool is you know i don't know he's kind of smart you don't really get to see enough of him to put him any higher but at the same time it clearly seems like he's a pretty intelligent person but i mean there's not enough to really put him any higher than c tier i mean you don't really get to see like his total intelligence here but you get to see he is like i don't know kind of a smart guy in his own way but i i just don't think there's like any like parts where i'd be like oh my god this is the smartest guy or oh my god this is a stupid guy so he just has to go into c tier in 24th place, I've got David Getty. He's pretty similar to, to Hair Cool. He doesn't have enough time to really see, like, how smart he is. You can clearly see that he's, like, I don't know, kind of well-educated. He knows how to run the ranch and all that. But he kind of just delegates everything off to other people. And you don't really get to see his smarts on that. And you know, I, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of the, the money he made or, like, him being a ranch owner really comes down to just, like, how he was grew up and how he was born because like it seems like the money came from like his parents or you know something like that instead of him actually making the money himself so i can't really put him any higher than c tier as well just because you don't get to see enough time of david gettys in 23rd place i got tilly i think tilly like you know i don't know solidly smart but again you don't really get to see enough of like them actually being a really smart character to you know be any higher than c tier i don't know she's smart she she eventually marries a really smart man himself herself but i just don't think there's like i don't know any anything that can put her higher than c tier here because you can't really see a lot of the smarts that tilly has just from the jump of the game so i think c tier fits her perfectly in 22nd place i've got uncle uncle clearly is really smart in his own way but at the same time like he clearly sees not that well educated and there's like some stupid parts in that way like i don't think he's as socially smart as people think people like he is a very charismatic guy but like just antagonizing every single person you know and just like messing with them like even though that is pretty funny it probably does get on people's nerves sometimes like a lot of the time so i don't know i can't really put him any higher than that for that and like it clearly seems like his lumbago doesn't like i don't know it takes him down a notch because he doesn't get to interact with as many people he doesn't get to have these cool like intelligent moments like a lot of these other people have but i definitely don't think he's a stupid character at all and he's he's definitely yeah he's definitely not stupid but he's not like super super smart in 21st place about brother dorkins i think brother dorkins is pretty intelligent but you don't really get enough time with him to put him any higher just because you know th there's not a lot going on in where I'd be like, oh my god, this is the most intelligent person in the entire game, or this is the least intelligent person in the entire game. You see that there is some, like, intelligence there, but nothing that I'd be like, oh my god, he's way more intelligent than the top person in the entire game. So, I think he has to go into B tier. Like, he definitely is intelligent, but not super, super intelligent. In 20th place, about Sadie Adler. I mean, clearly, she is pretty intelligent, especially in the epilogue. You get to see a lot more of that intelligence, and just, like, when she's helping everyone out in chapter 6, but... You clearly see like when she joins the Vanderlyn gang and you know becoming this gun slinging woman i don't think there's that much intelligence she kind of just goes on a blind revenge quest against the o'driscolls and i feel like that shows a lot of like not intelligence but it clearly seemed like she was just looking for something to do and she didn't really have anything to live for and that was her thing to live for so it's not really like not intelligent to do but it's just something that kind of hurts everyone else around her 
but only helps her because that's like her quest the entire time. So while she is a pretty solidly intelligent character, I can't really put her any higher because there's just not a lot going on that would be like, oh my god, she's the most intelligent character. So she has to go into B tier. In 19th place about Arthur Morgan. I think Arthur is pretty intelligent. You get to see it, especially as the game ends, where he like kind of, you know, starts to value his life and has some really intelligent quotes, like especially when he's talking to Charles when they're going to rescue Eagle Flies. It's like he starts getting more and more intelligent and more and more of this like Evelyn Mil Miller type character who speaks in like prose and all that. But at the same time, it's like Arthur isn't, you know, the smartest character in the entire game. He kind of is used as a brute for the majority of the game. So he goes from this character who's probably like C intelligent at the beginning of the game someone who's like a intelligence by the end of the game and i feel like that really kind of averages out to a b tier character and while there is a lot of intelligence he kind of gets it from other people and i feel like that shows that he can't be the super super top guy he's clearly not the most intelligent in the entire game but he does have some very very intelligent moments especially as time goes on when he begins to value the time he has left so i think arthur perfectly has to go into b tier but he can't go any higher just because he gets a lot of that intelligence from other people and passed down from other people in 18th place about charles smith i think charles is a very intelligent character but kind of just strictly goes to the super honorable way of doing it like he does get a lot of this intelligence from people like rain's fall and like just, I don't know, talking with other people and having all these different experiences. But at the same time, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, Charles is the most intelligent person on the entire game. Like you clearly see he has like a lot of similar qualities to someone like Hosea, but you can see that just the years with Hosea has really turned his intelligence up to a whole new level. And I think Charles is really just focused on the one honor like driven path instead of having like a lot more focuses on like just ways of doing things. So I think he has to go into B tier. Definitely more intelligent than Arthur and Sadie, but not like the most intelligent character in the entire game. In 17th place about Edith Downs. I think Edith Downs is pretty intelligent. Like she does all these things, take care of her family. But at the same time, there's some stuff with like Thomas Downs where it's like, you know, maybe t tell him to chill out on the charity and instead take care of his family. But I mean, she was taking care of the family the whole time. I feel like just everything she does, and especially at the end of the game, when they do become golf course owners, I feel like that has to show a lot of intelligence. And I think, you know, she is a very intelligent character. So I think she has to go into B tier, but she's not like super, super intelligent where I'd be like, okay, you know, she did all that. In 16th place about Mary Beth, Mary Beth is definitely pretty intelligent. I feel like the conversations she has with Arthur are like a little bit more intelligent than like the ones he has with Tilly or Karen. But at the same time, she also became a writer at the end of the game. So I feel like that has to show a lot of intelligence. He's out there like doing a lot of these like school smart things, you know, book smart things versus like actually being a street smart person. But at the same time, I feel like her looks and all that can put her in a super socially intelligent way. So I think she has to go into B tier. Like there's not a ton of ton of intelligence here. Like she's not like the most intelligent character in the entire game, but she clearly does have a solid amount of intelligence. And just the fact that she became a writer has to put her at least in B tier. In 15th place, it's Micah Bell. I know a lot of people have hate boners for Micah and are just like, oh my God, Micah is so much stupider than Arthur. But like at the same time, this guy literally manipulated the majority of the gang. Like, of course, Charles, Sadie, and Arthur didn't fall for it. But like Dutch, who's like one of the smartest people in the entire game, really fell for it. And like, even though he's not like a super, super intelligent character, he knows how to manipulate people and use them to his advantage, which I feel like has to put him above like Arthur and Charles and Sadie because he just has this like intelligence in terms of social intelligence intelligence that he can just use people's strong spots and like use what people want to do like he used dutch in terms of like trying to get him to do all these bigger and bigger and bigger heists and then he eventually you know got the money from blackwater and all that so i think micah has to be one of the smarter characters in the entire game and he knows how to prey on people and use them to fit his standards so i think that's what has to put him above some of these other characters but he's not super super intelligent like in other ways so i think he has to go into b tier in 14th place about Beau Gray, while Beau Gray is not my favorite character in the entire game, clearly this is a very, very intelligent man. I think both he and Penelope are like super well educated, super well spoken. They do all this. They do have some solid social IQs and like, you know, interactions with people. And while, you know, he doesn't really fit up to the, the whole family thing, I think, you know, he is very book smart. He does all these other things. So, I, I think he is one of the smarter characters in the entire game. And while there's not like a ton of ton of intelligence in terms of other things, I think he has to definitely go into at least B tier because he is a very smart character.
in 13th place about Penelope Braithwaite, pretty similar to Bo. He's she's just super well like spoken and intelligent and of course well educated. And I think while there isn't as much in terms of like social intelligence with both of them, I think she is definitely a lot more socially intelligent than Bo. He's kind of just like a loser sitting out there and she's like a lot more socially intelligent with other people and you know she kind of knows her way to get around things. So I think she has to go above Bo, but again, they're not like super super intelligent, but they're definitely intelligent people, so she has to go into B tier. In 12th place, I got Mary Lynn, pretty similarly to Bo and Penelope. She's just super, like, well-spoken and well-talked. And I feel like she just has a lot of good education. And I think she has a little bit more time than Penelope and Bo to actually, like, look out on the world and, you know, know how to use that school smart and, like, use it in the real world. And I think she also has some good emotional manipulation tactics, like with when she just manipulates Arthur all the time into, like, doing, you know, what she kind of wants him to do and like wants her to help him with so i think she also is just a little bit smarter in that way where she does have that you know solid emotional intelligence and she knows how to manipulate arthur into doing what she wants even when he doesn't want to as much so i think she also has to go into b tier she definitely is a smart character but not like extremely intelligent in 11th place about trelawney trelawney is very intelligent he's a con artist he can do all these things he is super super high social intelligence and i feel like he's pretty well spoken and all that but i think he just doesn't think everything through well he does have a ton of social intelligence and like it seems like he's pretty book smart in his own way as well i just don't think he thinks these things through and he's pretty naive in that same way where it's like he's always coming up with these crazy plans but he never finds a way to like finish off the plans and that's why he kind of always gets caught or you know other things happen so it's like well he does have a ton of ton of intelligence he just doesn't know how to fully use it and like fully put his brain to use so i think that's why he can't be higher than he is but he still is a very very intelligent character it feels like he always finds a way to finesse his way out of things or you know do other things so i i just think toronto is a great character and he's very very smart so he has to go into b tier in 10th place, I've got Catherine Braithwaite. I think she's like basically Trelawney, except actually knows how to use a plan. Like she's very cunning in that way. And I think she's just, you know, really smart in her own way. And while she does kind of not think through the whole Dutch Vanderlyn, the Vanderlyn gang's going to come after you. And I think she just thought she had more firepower. She does do all these things that are like pretty sneaky and work well. So like funding the Lemoyne Raiders and doing all that. And I think that really shows that she's a really smart, strong and smart character. And the fact that she's like a woman in the South running the household and she's been doing it for so long. She's like 70, 75 years old. I feel like has to show that she's a really smart character. So I think she's an, an A tier character in terms of intelligence. Just the fact that she's been doing it for so long shows that she's really smart. In ninth place, about Cole O'Driscoll. I think Cole O'Driscoll also is a very intelligent person. He kind of just knows how to manipulate people and use them to his advantage. I mean, you see, he just manipulates every single person who wants to join his gang. He has all these people that just keep on joining him, even though they know they're kind of like cannon fodder for him. So I think Cole O'Driscoll is a very intelligent person. The fact that he can kind of, you know, keep his wits against Dutch also shows that he's pretty intelligent because Dutch is an intelligent character as well. I think... It shows that he is really smart. I mean, the fact that he's been running the gang for a while while being one of the most wanted characters in the entire game shows that there's a lot of intelligence going on. He knows what he's doing, but eventually it kind of all catches up to him, which is why I can't put him any higher than A tier, but he still is a very intelligent character. In eighth place, I've got Agent Milton. I think Agent Milton is very, very intelligent. You see the whole time he's like, I only want Dutch Vanderlyn. All you guys can go. And I mean, even though that might have not been his true like idea of doing things, like he might have eventually caught up to everyone else. I think that was his main idea. I think that's what he was trying to do the entire time. He wasn't trying to go after anyone besides Dutch. And he wanted to see if anyone else would just give Dutch up. So I, I think the fact that Milton is a smart guy, he tries to use all these other things to, you know, get his way. And the fact that he really just like milked all the money out of Cornwall, I think is also a pretty smart thing. So Milton really is a smart character. And you see, he just kind of manipulates people into getting what he wants. And while, you know, he does get a little overconfident in this situation, which I think is a dumb maneuver on his part. I think he still is one of the smartest characters in the entire game. And the fact that he controlled the majority of the Pinkerton agency coming after Arthur and the Vanderlyn gang, which is like hundreds of people, shows a lot of intelligence as well. So I think he has to go into A tier just because of all those things. In seventh place about Angelo Bronte, the fact that this guy was literally running the police and basically running San Denis, which is a major city at this point, all from like basically his house shows how smart he is. Well, there is, of course, a little bit of, you know, overconfidence here as well 
with I mean similarly to a lot of these other characters there's a lot of overconfidence from Bronte the fact that this guy was literally running the entirety of San Denis which I mean is a smaller city in the game but in real life probably would be even bigger than this it's just uh an amazing fact and the fact that he did this basically coming from nothing I feel like has to show that he's a very very intelligent character and has to at least put him in the A tier could even put him higher but the fact that we don't really get to see enough of that and see like how he got up to that level shows that he can't be any higher than A tier in sixth place, I've got Leopold Strauss. I think Leopold Strauss is a very, very intelligent character here. I mean, it feels like he has no physical attributes that are going to help him at all in life. But at the same time, he uses that super, super sharp mental ability and kind of uses that to, you know, carry him through life. So while he isn't, you know, the smartest, smartest character, I feel like everything he does is all just based on his intelligence. He does all these things. He makes a ton of money for the gang. And I feel like he basically is the third in command in terms of the gang behind Hosea and Dutch and I feel like just because he is super old and super wise I feel like he's a really really smart character I mean I think he's underrated in terms of his ability but at the same time he doesn't have that much social smarts and I feel like a lot of people are kind of get pissed off at him rightly so just because he's involved in such a bad business and I think that's kind of what takes him down but at the same time I feel like he's a very smart character so he has to go into A tier. In fifth place I've got Hosea Matthews. Hosea is definitely a really smart character He's very like well lived and you know has a lot of time and you know has developed very very solid like school smart book smart all that and he's pretty well read in his own right. But at the same time, he's really great socially and I feel like he always kind of fits the right situation. Like when him and Arthur go and they're like Fen and his brother and it's like oh my god it's, a, it's such a great scenario and I feel like it just shows how good he is at social situations and how he how good he is at like diffusing things and kind of working his way in he's kind of a mix of like trelawney and i don't know someone that's <laughs> someone that's pretty well read book smart trelawney and lenny in terms of like school smarts and like book smarts and like social smarts and i feel like that really works well shows intelligence i think that's why he has to go into a tier but he can't go any higher than that because i feel like his levels at both of those things are just a little bit lower than those two. So he is a really smart character, but not the smartest in the entire game. In fourth place, we've got Sister Calderon. I feel like she really introduces Arthur to a lot of things that really just turn his mindset. And I feel like that's why she's super intelligent. She knows how to use people and like not manipulate them, but like show them different sides of things and, you know, show them how to look at things in a different way and look at them in a different perspective. She kind of teaches him empathy in a way. And I think that's what really works. And I think she's a really you know, smart and well-versed character. So I think she has to go into S tier. She's a really, really smart character, but there's not enough time to really put her higher than any of these other three characters. In third place, it's Dutch Vanderlyn. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh my God, Dutch isn't as smart as some of these other characters. Yes, he is. He's one of the smartest, like well-read people. You know, he listens to Evelyn Miller and he has a certain perspective on life, which I mean, I don't really know if I'd say that's the smartest thing, but he's so good socially. He's definitely the most social, like the best social character in the entire game. His charisma and the fact that he basically survives and gets away from the Pinkertons and all these detective agencies and all these sheriffs that are coming after him where there's like $5,000 on Dutch Vanderlyn's head. You might as well have said this guy is the smartest person in the entire world. The fact that he does this being one of the most wanted men in multiple states for so long shows that he's a really, really smart character. He knows how to do everything socially. I feel like his charisma just takes him to a whole new level. And while he eventually does kind of get manipulated and turned by Micah, I don't think that really shows that he's a stupid character. It just seems like Micah really appealed to certain sides of him, and I feel like that's what turned him in that way. And while he did turn on Arthur and John, I don't think that shows that he's a stupid character. It just shows that he wanted to go in a different direction, and they wanted to go in a different direction. And while they were, like, technically, he was technically manipulated at the end of the game when it's like, Micah shot Grimshaw, he's like, who's with me? And it's like, clearly, Micah's not with you, he just shot Grimshaw. It seems like he's just going in a different direction, and I mean, the whole time he still survived. So I think Dutch is a super, super smart character and has to go into S tier. In second place, it's Rain's Fall. Come on, Rain's Fall is really, really smart, and I feel like everything he does just, you know, shows empathy and sympathy and all that, and just shows that he's super, super emotionally intelligent character. And I feel like, well, he is pretty smart socially. Like he knows how to, you know, turn people 
into like, you know, seeing his perspective. It doesn't really work because he is Native American and because a lot of like, yeah, no, the people in the army don't really see it his way. But you see that he basically turns Captain Monroe into a guy that's going to sacrifice his entire life to save his people. So I, I just think every way he speaks and just the way he talks shows so much intelligence. So I think he has to go in the S series, one of the most intelligent characters in the entire game. And then in first place, I have Leviticus Cornwall. I feel like Cornwall has to be the most intelligent character in the entire game. I feel like Cornwall clearly is just one of the most intelligent characters because he built up a business to literally billions of billions of dollars. So I feel like that has to show that he has a lot of, you know, intelligence. I mean, you clearly see some of the people like nowadays where it's like Jeff Bezos and all that. It's like you do need a little bit of intelligence to do what they're doing. But like, especially in the old days where you have like oil magnets, business magnets, and all that, and it's like railroad magnets. These people are absolutely crazy because they had to control multiple different industries, and I feel like just the fact that this guy is just one of the richest characters in the entire game shows that he's one of the most intelligent. So I think the fact that he controlled all these industries was running one of the biggest businesses of the time and was just doing something that no one else could do at this time, I think has to show that he's one of the most intelligent characters in the entire game and to me is the most intelligent character in the entire game. So I think he has to get S tier as the most intelligent character in the entire game. That wraps up my entire Red Dead Redemption 2 intelligence tier list. Let me know what you guys would change in the comments below. And if you do guys do want more content like this, I will be posting a ton more tier lists about Red Dead Redemption 2 and other Rockstar games.